we can define gas pressure as um, the molecules colliding with the walls of the container, exerting a force across some area. A lot of times we think of pressure as force divided by area. But practically speaking, how do we actually measure and quantify gas pressure? Well, the first individual to do so was a Italian in the 17th century named Tor Tor Torricelli. Torricelli. Torricelli devised a device called a barometer. A barometer is a um, device in which you take a liquid. In this case, he used mercury, but it can be also be done with other liquids. Um, and you have an open dish of your liquid, in this case mercury, and you invert a uh, glass tube that's filled with that same liquid, in this case mercury, and you measure the height of the mercury column. The reason why this is done is because in order to measure the force divided by area of a gas, you really have to measure the opposing force. And so uh, the theory behind this is that the uh, the gas in the atmosphere is exerting a force in all directions on this open pan of mercury and everything else for that matter. And then when one fills the glass tube with mercury and inverts it, the mercury level drops until the force uh, of the mercury at this cross-sectional area down here is equal to the force of the atmosphere pushing back on the surface of the mercury. So we're indirectly measuring the, the force or the pressure of the atmosphere by measuring the force of this opposing column of mercury. So and when the forces are not balanced, the mercury level will drop until a point when the forces are balanced, and then we can say that this force of the column of mercury equals the force of the mercury column is going to equal at this time the force of the, of the gas in the atmosphere. And since we define pressure as force divided by area, then we can determine the pressure of the mercury on this area uh, at the bottom of the tube, and that will be equal to the force of the gas, which is indirectly pushing back up um, on that same area. So let's look and see how this works out unit-wise. All right, so we know that uh, pressure equals force divided by area. All righty. Uh, pressure equals force divided by area. We want to figure out the force uh, exerted on this bit of area by this column of mercury. All right, well, the definition of force is mass times acceleration. All right, and in this case, the acceleration is due to gravity. So it's the mass times the gravity and the uh, the grab the uh, and we'll just use the uh, gravity due to acceleration well accepted 9.8 um, meters per second squared abbreviated uh, lowercase g all right well how do we figure out the mass um, of that mercury and also the area because we still have to remember that this is all over that area for pressure okay well, we can uh, do a little unit analysis and recognize that, of course, this height of mercury is going to be dependent on the density of the, of the mercury. Uh, density varies with temperature, and so the height is going to, de to depend on the density and the temperature. So it's best if we um, express this mass in terms of, uh, of the density, and to do that, we know that uh, density is in units of uh, grams or mass unit per volume unit. So we can say that the, uh, I'm going to go down here and just do a little unit analysis here. The mass of the mercury is going to be equal to the density of the mercury times the volume of the mercury. Okay? And the volume of the mercury, then, is going to be equal to the height of the mercury, the height of the column, of mercury, and I'll just call that H for height of the mercury, <clears throat> mercury times the area, the cross-sectional area of your tube. So we'll call that the area of the mercury. All right, so now we've expressed mass in terms of the density and the height, and that's what Tor Torricelli did. He measured the height of the column of the mercury, and he showed that the height changed 
with altitude. If he was at the bottom of a mountain, the height was greater than if he was at the top of the mountain, and therefore he deduced that the pressure changed as you moved to higher altitudes. So the height of the mercury is a direct um, leap proportional to the um, pressure, the atmospheric pressure. So we can use that measurable value height now um, in measuring our pressure. All right, so let's back up here. We were working on figuring out the density, and we're going to express density in terms of, uh, excuse me, the mass in terms of the density, the height of the mercury, and the area um, of the tube. Let's take this idea of mass and uh, plug it back into this expression right here. So now we have the pressure of the uh, mercury column is equal to the uh, density of the mercury times the, and I'm going to do something here. Rather than write out density, a lot of times the Greek letter uh, rho, which I'm going to abbreviate like that, I don't know if that's a good, um, let me see, let me just do it like this. Rho is, a, is, a, is the abbreviation used for density. Rho times the mercury times the height of the mercury times the area of the mercury. Okay, so that's the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. Well, that's just G divided by the area of the mercury is going to be the same uh, pushing back uh, on. So that area of the mercury uh, cancels out, and we have a simple equation to uh, determine the pressure uh, <coughs> uh, exerted by the column of mercury, which is going to equal the pressure exerted by the column of mercury is going to equal the pressure of the atmosphere, which is equal to the density of the mercury times the height of the mercury column times the acceleration due to gravity. Now we have a simple way to, to relate the height, the absolute measurement, to the um, absolute pressure. And it's useful to uh, re remind ourselves that if we express all of these units in base units, the units in this case for the pressure uh, of the atmosphere are going to be in units <clears throat> of, let's see, kilograms times inverse meters times inverse seconds squared, which is the same as the units for Pascal.